In this video, we're going to look at Norton's theorem. In previous videos, we've looked at a circuit theorem called Thevenin's theorem, which was a circuit simplification theorem about simplifying circuits down to just two components, a voltage source and one resistor. Now, Norton's theorem is very similar, but whereas Thevenin's theorem dealt with voltages, Norton's theorem deals with currents. And so here's a definition of Norton's theorem to simplify circuits to one constant current source, which we call IN, the Norton current, and one resistance in parallel, which we call RN, the Norton resistor. And so our Norton's equivalent circuit looks something like this. We can see that we have this uh, new circuit symbol that you might not recognize on the left hand side, which is the symbol for a constant current source. Um, but that's the um, that's marked IN, the Norton current. And then in parallel, we have this Norton resistor, RN. And this is slightly different to our Thevenin equivalent circuit that we looked at in previous videos because the resistance here is in parallel, whereas with our Thevenin equivalent circuit, the resistor was in series. So a couple of differences here between Norton's and Thevenin's theorems. Norton's were dealing with currents rather than voltages, and the, um, the resistance is in parallel rather than in series. So like with Thevenin's theorem, there are three steps that I want to follow in order to convert or simplify any given circuit down to this Norton equivalent circuit. So the first step looks like this. It says find the closed circuit current between terminals A and B. And like we said in uh, the, the examples with Thevenin's theorem, we're marking our two terminals here, A and B. So the first step there to find the closed circuit current between terminals A and B. And we'll, we'll look at what that means a bit more with an example in just a second. The second step, find the open circuit impedance from terminal A to terminal B. And then finally, step three, draw the Norton equivalent circuit marking on values from steps one and two. Let's look at a simple example of how we can put these three steps into practice. So I have a small circuit here and it's not a, a very complicated circuit but we can still simplify it further by using Norton's theorem. Let's put some values on this circuit first of all and let's say that that cell on the left hand side there, I've marked it VS, the supply voltage, but let's say that it's 10 volts. So we have a 10 volt cell on the left hand side there. And resistors R1 and R2, let's say that they are 390 ohms, so a 390 ohm resistor there for R1, and a 470 ohm resistor for R2. So step one, first of all, asks us to calculate the closed circuit current. Well, first of all, looking at this circuit, we can see that this is what we call an open circuit. The output terminals here, A and B, they don't go anywhere, and they're not a complete circuit. So Norton's theorem is asking us to consider that if we did close this circuit, so I'll draw a connection here between A and B, if we did close this circuit, Norton's theorem is asking us what is the current that would flow from terminal A to terminal B. And we're going to mark that as the Norton current, IN. So let's have a look at this circuit and think about where the current is going to flow in this circuit as soon as I close the, the uh, circuit there. Because when I close the circuit, I'm actually changing the circuit a little bit and how it operates. Because what's going to happen is when current flows from the cell, first of all, and goes around this circuit, it's going to get to this junction point here. Now, previously, current would have flowed down through R2, through the 470 ohm resistor. But now that I've closed the circuit between A and B, current is actually going to flow this way and it's not going to flow through R2. We know this uh, saying that current takes the easiest path. Well, what I've done is I've short-circuited R2, the 470 ohm resistor. Current is, isn't going to flow through a resistor when it can just flow through a wire. And so what happens is all of the current is going, rather than through R2, it's going to go from A to B as our Norton current. So what we can do is really we can, um, we can ignore R2 for the purposes of calculating current in this example. So we can say that IN, the Norton current, 
is equal to voltage divided by resistance. And for us, the voltage is 10, and the resistance is just 390. We've said that we've, we've bypassed that 470. We've short-circuited it, um, so we can miss it out in this, in this step. So 10 divided by 390 gives me um, a value of 0.02564 amps. Well, I'm going to multiply that by 1,000 um, so that I can express it in milliamps. So that's 25.64 milliamps. Step two was to calculate the open circuit impedance from terminal A through the circuit to terminal B. And to do this, I need to do two things here. First of all, I need to remove this closed circuit um, connection that I have here. We don't need that for step two, because step two is asking us to work out the open circuit impedance from terminal A to terminal B. The second thing, just like Thevenin's theorem, when I'm, when I'm working out the impedance of this circuit, I can short circuit any... Um, voltage sources or, or, or cells in this case. So I'm just imagining that that cell is just a wire. So going from terminal A to terminal B, I'm imagining the path that I'm going to take here. And again, we have, starting at terminal A, we have this junction again. And what happens is we can either go through R1 or we can go through R2. There's a split there. And so R1 and R2 are considered as being in parallel. Um, when, we're, when we're considering going from A to B. We can go this way through R1 and round to B, or we can go this way through R2 to B. And so for our second step there, when we're working out the Norton resistance, we need to say that R1 is in parallel with R2. Now, that double slash there, like I've used in my previous videos, is just meant to be a shorthand for resistors that are in parallel. But if you're not sure how to calculate resistors in parallel, I recommend going back to the video where we do so. But if I calculate R1 in parallel with R2, which is the same as uh, 390 in parallel with 470, I get an answer of 213.14 ohms. So we've done step one, step two, finally step three was to draw our simplified uh, Norton equivalent circuit. So we know that the Norton equivalent circuit uh, takes the form of a constant current source, those two overlapping rings, um, and then we've got our one resistance in parallel. So I'll mark that on there as well. But we can do better than that. We can mark on some values from steps one and two. We said that our current, the Norton current, is 25.64 uh, milliamps. And we also said that our Norton resistance is 213.14 ohms. So there's our Norton equivalent circuit for this simple example. And just like in uh, Thevenin's theorem, these these two circuits are meant to be completely equivalent. And what that means to say is that we can take any measurement we want at the two terminals. I could attach a, a voltmeter from terminal A to terminal B in both instances, and I should get the same, uh, the same reading. I could connect an ammeter, or I could connect an ohmmeter, or whatever measurement that I want to take, I should find that these two circuits are completely equivalent to one another. But one is obviously a simplification of the other. So I hope you found this video on Norton's theorem useful. In the next videos, we're going to cover some more complicated examples of how we can apply uh, Norton's theorem to different circuits.